So on behalf of the interim committee of the Spanish Teachers Association of Trinidad and Tobago, I really want to warmly welcome all of you with, you know, sunshine for Trinidad to our session today. And it's led by Joe, who seems to have, you know, mobilized quite a number of his vast Twitter following based on this response. And uh, he will be expertly presenting on the topic, Remote Language Learning Reconfigured, a Pedagogical Paradigm Shift. Now, Joe is an independent languages consultant from the UK, who works with a range of organizations such as Network for Languages, All, the British Council, the BBC, Skype, Microsoft, and The Guardian. He was host of the TES MFL Forum for six years, former SSAT languages lead practitioner, a regular conference speaker, and recognized expert on technology and language learning. He has spoken at conferences and run training courses in Europe, North America, South America, the Middle East, the Far East, and Australasia. He was a member of the Ministerial Steering Group on Languages for the UK Coalition Government and advised on the LinguaNet Worldwide Project for the Language Company. He created ICT activities for the New Institut Francais, All, and Network for Languages Primary French Project Niveau Bleu, Blanc, and Rouge courses, and was shortlisted for a NAACE Impact Award in 2013 too. Joe supported the Erasmus Plus Project Conflict to Cooperation with five European countries and is currently involved in the Supporting Schools Reform in Algeria project through the British Council. He was recently described in a Guardian article as an MFL guru and the man behind the MFL Twitterati. And so without further ado, I hand you over to Joe. Welcome, Joe. Thank you so Thank much, Darcel. That's really kind of you. Could you mute your audio now, Darcel, if that's okay, so I don't have the echo. That's amazing. So thank you so much, um, everybody, uh, for coming along. Thank you so much to the Spanish Association for Trinidad and Tobago, uh, and, so, and so much to Helen as well for being the digital bouncer and, and helping me with the live stream and, and setting up all the things in the background. There's been a huge amount of effort that's gone into this, so it's amazing that you're all here, and uh, hopefully you'll find this useful. So uh, I'd also like to officially thank now where we're recording as well, uh, Dr. Mark Goodwin, who's the, the current chair of ISMALA, the Independent Schools Modern Languages Association. Uh, Darcel contacted uh, him about um, possible speakers for webinars. Uh, this is the fourth in the series of webinars that the Spanish Association of Trinidad and Tobago have been running. So I'm really delighted that I'm sort of ending the, the, the series, as it were, with number four. And uh, because of Mark, uh, that's why this has happened. So Mark rec uh, recommended me. I've done some webinars for Ismala, and that's why Darcel asked me to do this. So that's just the context, uh, as it were. So if I could tell you a little bit more about, uh, about my teaching background. So I was a French teacher for 13 years, teaching secondary school level for three years, uh, two years in North Wales in, in um, uh, North Wales uh, uh, in the UK and then because um, we've got some people from North Wales here and uh, a year in uh, Yeovil in Somerset and then 10 years on the Isle of Wight um, which is where I still am right now I have been for 20 years so I taught there for 10 years in a middle school 9 13 year olds so I've got upper primary and secondary school experience and for the last um, 10 years I've been an independent languages consultant and I normally travel around the world uh, going to different places but of course uh, for the last 12 weeks um, I've been on the Isle of Wight, the sunny Isle of Wight, um, doing uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of webinars and working incredibly hard on trying to support language teachers but more of that um, in a moment and the last place I had been was Algeria which was at the start of March and I sort of came back and I've been home ever since which is uh, there we are. So these are my contact details on the uh, on the, that first slide so I'm at Joe Dell on Twitter if you're not following me already and you'd like to feel free to follow me my email address is joedellatalk21.com. Uh, I'm going to talk for an hour and 20 something minutes. I hope you'll we'll have some questions at the end, but feel free to write the questions in the chat, put a queue in front of the question if you would like, and, um, and yeah, feel free to write your comments, but please let's be professional at all times. Okay, let's uh, go on to slide two. Right, so um, a little bit about me. I mean, Darcel has already said this already. So Officially, I'd like to thank um, the STATT for inviting me to do this webinar. And you can see it does, it does say 4 p.m. That's 4 p.m. Trinidad and Tobago time, which is what it is at the moment, or is about to, or it, sorry, it has just been uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, nine o'clock in the UK, which I know it caused some confusion, but you're all still here. So that's, uh, that's brilliant. And let's go on to the next right. So we're going to um, get interactive. So I would like everyone to go to uh, menti.com for me please as you can see on the screen menti.com uh, so in your browser I'm going to come out of my presentation and I'm gonna um, I want to ask you a few questions if that's okay via menti meter I don't know if you all know menti meter but it's a really nice tool for 
online polling. And as you can see, um, I've got a couple of questions here. So what I would like you to do, please, is go to menti.com in the chat. I'm just writing it for you, menti.com, and put in the code, which is 818712. I'm sure you can see this on the screen, but just to, for peace of mind, I'm writing it in here as well, 818712. Uh, you put that in, and then you can then write um, different phrases, which then will start to appear on the screen. So the reason I'm, I'm doing this activity is one to, to see how you're feeling about remote teaching. Uh, a lot of you have been um, teaching for many, many weeks. Um, some of you have been teaching, I'm sure, for a little bit longer, depending on which country you're in. But um, as you can see now, it's changing uh, in real time very quickly, dynamically. So if you haven't seen Mentees before, it's a really nice way of creating a word cloud. You could use it for retrieval practice, for example. So I could say, uh, write down everything you can remember about what we did uh, last week or last month. So for example, if you were doing the topic of, say, sport and leisure, then I could ask everyone to write in phrases in the perfect tense around uh, that particular topic. So it's nice for retrieval practice. You could use it as a plenary activity as well. Um, and uh, uh, there is a, a profanity filter with uh, Mentimeter, but unfortunately, if words get through because you, um, the children have used the symbol or what have you, then you can't just right click uh, the text annoyingly and remove it. You'd have to just go on to another slide. So I'm just being sort of very transparent with you about that. Wow, you can see how quickly it's changing. That's amazing. Um, right, let's carry on to the next one. Okay, so I'm not going to show this live. I'm just going to, because that's a bit risky, I'm just going to talk through. Um, what this is. Now, don't forget, I'm sharing the whole presentation with you as well, which is great. Uh, so this is Jamboard. Now, Jamboard is a Google tool, which does mean that you need to have a Google account to use it. But the great thing about Jamboard is it does allow you to create a collaborative whiteboard. So one of the things that teachers were definitely wanting when they were first asked to uh, remote teach was to have some sort of um, a tool that would replicate um, the sorts of things they would do in a face-to-face -face classroom. And so Jamboard is really nice for that. There are, if you're a Microsoft uh, school, then obviously you've got the Microsoft whiteboard and you've got other third-party tools as well, which you could use, um, uh, such as Miro, for example, M-I-R-O. But Jamboard is unlimited on the number of Jamboards you can have. You can have up to 20 frames per Jamboard as well. So it's really, really nice. And I've been going a bit crazy about, um, about Jamboard. And, and in this slide, you can see I've got three links. Um, and essentially what I've done is per Jamboard, you can have up to 20 frames. So I've done 20 different examples of ideas that could be used in languages. So the first one, which is a screenshot, is um, using Screencastify, which allows you to record your screen. Um, you can do annotations with it as well if you want to, but you can record your screen. So you could, for example, be describing a grammar point or you could be um, giving some uh, feedback to a student and record the screen at the same time. Or you could be doing, asking them to do a collaborative activity, we say a couple of them, three of them, and record the screen at the same time. And with Screencastify, you can also annotate the screen as well. I know there are other tools such as Loom and, and uh, Screencast-O-Matic, but I think that works really nicely with that. And if you, if you carry on uh, in the different frames, then you can see many, many examples of things you can use with Jamboard. So for example, you could um, play games. Uh, on the second set of jam boards that I've made, you could make, uh, you could do a battleship game. There's one about noughts and crosses. So sort of classic games that you can use in languages, but as a way, as a vehicle for pro promoting speaking and listening skills. Um, there's some um, exercises which I got from uh, uh, different sort of puzzle maker type games um, on the internet. So things like um, fallen phrases, whereby you, ha you have like a sort of crossword type uh, image and then you have to uh, get the students to write in the correct letter using the pen tool so again like starter activities using that pen tool for that interaction so with Jamboard you can add in photos you can add in sticky notes you can use the pen tool uh, it's really really nice if you're looking for a collaborative whiteboard so the the students would need to have um, a Google account to access it but if you're in a Google school oh you need to have the admin turn it on as well it's, it is a core tool within um, uh, within G Suite, but you need to ask your admin person to turn it on for you, otherwise it won't appear. Um, uh, so these the templates, Kelly, that I'm showing you, uh, which I would be showing you, but um, I don't want to, you know, I want to maybe use uh, the presentation in the cache, as it were. So um, I don't want to actually go out of the uh, onto the onto the web and show you this live. But these are all examples of um, templates which you could use, and then you can then uh, take each link, and you can see at the bottom that it says edit question mark USP equals sharing. If you just delete that content, 
uh, from edit uh, to the right of edit and then put in the word copy, you can do a hard copy. Helen, do, did you want to say it's something? It's not moving on. I thought you were. No, it's not. I'm not. I'm not trying to move it on. I'm just. I'm just. Just describing what you would be seeing if I was showing my screen. But I don't want to risk that again um, okay, because so I'm presuming. Just presuming Jamboard that this... examples at the moment. Yeah. Please. So I'm just talking through Jamboard examples. I'm not actually showing it to you. But if you were to click on any of those links, um, and don't forget, I'm sharing the whole presentation with you. Then you'll have access to to all of this. I'm just saying the sorts of things that you could be seeing if you were clicking on that link. But as I've said, because of the internet issues now, I'm just going to stay within the presentation. I'm not going to show you the interactive things I was going to show because I think that it might all fall down again if that's okay. Um, so uh, yeah, so all of the all the whole presentation you're going to get at the end. So don't worry. But I'm not going to share all the links in the chat. I'm just going to keep it in the uh, cache, as it were, if that's okay. Uh, you, you should be able to see my screen. Can you not see my screen, Savan? You should be able to see my we screen. Can see so, your screen, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure why you can't. Okay, right. So let's carry on anyway. So that's that's Jamboard. You know, sort of classic uh, uh, collaborative whiteboard. Um, if you do a search for Jamboard on um, on Twitter, you'll find lots of examples. That's what I did and got inspired and then sort of made up my own uh, language specific ones. So let's um, let's carry on to the next slide. Okay, with the iOS app and also with the Android app as well, you have a few more features. So if you tap on the pen tool, for example, on the iOS app, then you get to these assistive tools, which are particularly nice. So that's why I've got a screenshot there. And so the one that's got A and A next to it, if you tap on that, what it allows you to do on the iPad app and on the Android app, you can draw, for example, a word, and then it will then convert it into digital text, which is quite nice. Um, and annoyingly, it only works in English and Japanese, and I checked that with uh, my friend Chris Hart, who was uh, took part in a webinar that we did recently, and that's what he told me. So it's only available in English and and and, um, and uh, sorry, not Chinese, Japanese, English and Japanese. Um, but uh, it's really nice for converting digital text in uh, sorry, written uh, uh, handwritten text into digital text. To the right of that, you've got the circle and the square, and that allows you to draw a, a circle as an annotation with your finger or your stylus and it will turn it into a perfect circle into a perfect square. So you could do sort of simple things like rooms in the house or objects in, the, in your, your bedroom, uh, draw them with the different shapes and then get the students to then um, make up language about, for example, prepositions or you know, simple, simple um, vocabulary around simple shapes. And then to the right of that, which is my favorite one, the pen tool, that's using what's called auto draw. So you can, for example, draw the picture of a cat's face, which is what I normally do at this point, and then it will then uh, uh, suggest different professional looking bits of clip art, which are all royalty free, which you can then click on and it will turn your, uh, your annotation of a cat's face into an actual cat's face, as in a, a professional looking piece of clip art. So for, for adding um, those sorts of bits of clip art into your Jamboard, it's very nice. And you can also put in animated GIFs, which is also very nice as well. So you can add in different GIFs within, um, uh, within your Jamboard. So as I said, Anna, these are available on definitely on the iOS app and I believe on the Android app as well, but you have to check it out. So the web-based version is a bit more stripped down, but you can do all the things I've been talking about if you check out the examples, which you can have a look at after the presentation. Okay, right, the next thing we're going to do is I'm gonna talk about this um, Google Doc, which again, I'm not gonna show you live because I don't want to come out of the presentation, but uh, back in March, um, so whenever that was now, 12 weeks ago, 14 weeks ago, I lose count. Um, it was clear we were going into lockdown. And so what I thought would be really handy would be to start collecting uh, lots of links that people were sharing at the time and put them into a, um, into a big Google Doc, which started off as 18 pages and is now about 40 pages long. Uh, you can access this. I can give you the link right now in the, uh, in the chat, uh, which is is.gd forward slash tilt furs Joe Dale. Oh, and my keyboard's not working. Oh, it's going really well at the moment. Right, so I have, oh, here we are. Right, let's keep going. All right, am I dreaming or is this actually happening? Right, okay, so Joe, right, Joe, uh, sorry, start again. Right, so is.gd, right, tilt, furs, there we are. Right, so that's the link. So that is a URL shortcut to this very long Google Doc. So, um, uh, Helen and myself also decided back in March that we were going to put together a series of webinars, which we decided to, to, to call TILT. Uh, TILT stands for Technology in, uh, in Language Teaching. And originally, well, we normally do a face-to-face -face event uh, in April. And of course, that was cancelled along with everything else in my diary for the foreseeable future. And so as a result of that, we thought it would be a good idea because it was very clear 
that language teachers needed um, lots of support because um, uh, that was sort of like um, uh, the, the, the panic stage, as it were. We had the panic stage, and then we had then had the research stage, which is sort of what happened after that, which we which I'll talk about more uh, later through the MFL Twitter RT community. And uh, we're now going into sort of like the hybrid stage or the planning for the hybrid stage, which is going to be like the September start again who knows what that's going to be if that's going to be face-to-face -face classes online classes or a mixture of the two so uh we definitely were in panic phase in uh, in march me included um and so the first presentation the first tilt webinar was me going through this presentation uh, or this this um document which i've shared with you right now whenever i look at that document it's always got about sort of 10 to 15 people looking at it live so it's it's many many different links around um, remote teaching overviews uh, world language teachers or modern foreign language teachers uh, resources like tutorials and webinars and websites that they put together uh, some advice on video conferencing tools such as zoom and google meet and microsoft teams screencasting tools uh, loom screencastify screencastomatic and then lots of other tools interactive tools um, which you can imagine everyone was saying how do i do speaking remotely how do i do listening remotely how do i do writing remotely and all the rest of it and so i thought i'd put this together to then help people um, to get started because I didn't want anyone to feel you know, panicked or worried or whatever. So I stepped up uh, along with uh, everyone else did as well, which I'm gonna talk about more in a moment. So this, um, this particular quote, which really uh, moved me, resonated with me back in March, was from a head teacher in um, the uh, principal of St. George's, sorry, uh, the St. George's British International School in Rome. And in fact, the head of department I follow on Twitter, whose name is Bay uh, Raniero, and he thanked me for including this, um, this quote within uh, my uh, Ismail presentation, the first one that I did. And um, I'm not going to sort of read out the whole quote, you can read it, but essentially what he's saying is that one of the silver linings of this whole experience could be that those teachers who have always been reluctant to use educational technology maybe will have their mindset changed because of the fact they've been forced to use it, as it were. Um, but um, hopefully as a result of that, they've seen all the different possibilities that have happened that so maybe because they've been forced to do that, then they've actually seen the power of using educational technology. And then he also says that for those people that are used to uh, using educational technology, they might feel you know, limited by, by what it can do and, and miss, uh, along with everyone else, miss the face-to-face the -face, um, experience of being in the classroom, which of course I'm sure everyone does. And I've, I've seen lots of lovely tweets about you know, uh, classroom teachers bemoaning the fact that they, they're missing the, you know, banter in the classroom and the, and the, and the, active, uh, the activity from the students and, and, and all the things that happen in a face-to-face -face classroom, which I know personally, having been a teacher myself. Um, but I think this is a really nice, uh, potentially a silver lining from this. And I've seen that in a face-to-face -face context, uh, sorry, in an in a online context on Twitter by people talking about this uh, very issue. So thank you for David Tung for, for writing that. And then to go more local, um, this is from the MFL Twitterati. Um, which again, I would normally show you this live, but I'm just going to stick on this on this page. So um, uh, discussions like this have been happening all the time. This was back in April, but I'm seeing this on a daily basis. People talking about um, how you're using this tool, how you're using that tool, and things like that. So uh, Francisco, uh, as you can see here, said, you know, would we see a boom in the use of tech in education after lockdown? Would schools use it as a tool to close the gap? For example, online intervention sessions, recorded capture lessons, etc. And then you've got Adam. Uh, Lamb, who, uh, if you're based in the UK, has done amazing things with GCSE um, writing uh, um, support and speaking support. Check out his YouTube channel. It's uh, fantastic. So you can see that some, uh, Adam is a fan of technology, but he also says, uh, as I sort of referred to already, the fact that he misses, you know, the um, the fact that, you know, you can't just stroll around and, and intervene and, and uh, you know, use a red pen uh, during practice time and, and all these sorts of things, which are bread and butter to uh, teaching, you know, when you're teaching face to face, which of course people miss, but at the same time, he also says that he maybe he feels, you know, not so scared to use technology in the future, which is lovely. Um, and yeah, other people have said sort of similar things in that, um, that exchange. So I thought I would point that out that, um, that, you know, people are talking about this sort of thing all the time. If you've never heard of the MFL Twitter RT, I, I need to expand as well that that's a community of language teachers, language consultants, and language um, organizations, including AWL. And um, there's 5,000 members simply because that's the limit that you can have on a Twitter list. And so literally on a daily basis, I'm taking people off the list and adding people on the list. But uh, it's an incredibly dynamic um, community. And they've really you know, stepped up. They've always been very supportive and what have you, but they've really stepped up during the crisis to share ideas and, 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 uh, and share resources and all the rest of it. So that's been a definite silver lining, I think, uh, as part of this whole process, which I'm trying to sort of champion in this presentation. 
Okay, so going back to the Tilt webinars. So um, if you want to find out about the Tilt webinars, and of course anyone is anyone is welcome. This room that we're using right now is Helen's room, which takes up to 500 people. I don't know how many people are in the chat. Oh no, I can see it. So wow, 393. Okay, in the in the Zoom meeting right now, but um, um, we can take up to 500 people. So if anyone wants to come along, and they're all recorded as well, and they're available on my YouTube channel, which is the link is at the bottom there. But we started off by. Um, looking at sort of uh, the platforms like Microsoft platform and Google platforms. And then we went into uh, areas like screencasting and sort of uh, more recently, you know, very creative ideas like escape rooms and, and visual, vid, uh, virtual adventures and things like that. And it's been incredible. And we've had not, uh, not only people from the UK, but people literally from around the world. And we've got some, some very exciting uh, uh, presentations coming up as well. But um, you have to find out about those on the AWL London branch because I'm not going to um, uh, announce them right now. You'll have to check them out in your own time. But we've had literally people from around the world so far doing the webinars, for which we're very grateful. And it's been lovely, again, how the language community, the global language community has stepped up, which I think is representative very much so here uh, right now. Now, if you're into Bitmojis, um, which you would have seen um, uh, in my Jamboard, I had a few Bitmojis, but if you're into Bitmojis, you'll probably know about the Facebook group um, Bitmoji craze for educators, which if you haven't heard about, I would really recommend having a look at it. Although there is the the warning that goes with it, you'll probably you know go down a rabbit hole while you're in there, and then you know come out a, a day later having been incredibly inspired by lots of creative ideas. So one of the creative ideas, which I thought was brilliant for um, that Facebook group, was to use the trailer option within iMovie, and to do that, um, it's very very straightforward. Instead of creating a project, you create a trailer, and you can use the Bitmojis that you use. Um, that, that you've got it within the either with the in the app or with the Chrome extension um, and you can put all those images into um, the uh, iMovie trailer so here's a little um, 90s uh, sorry 60 second video uh, which hopefully will play um, about uh, the Bitmoji trailer that I made uh, advertising tilt here we go Lots of fun. Um, I think you could hear that uh, because nobody could say, I can't hear that. So that's all good. Um, always in Zoom, always click the share computer sound, which um, is a mistake I make from time to time. But uh, yeah, you did hear it. Brilliant. So yeah, so very easy to do. You just go through the storyboard in, uh, in iMovie. Uh, very easy to do. So there's lots and lots of creative ideas within, the, uh, uh, within that Facebook group. So I would really recommend having a look at that. I can see that people are sharing ideas on how they've been using this in the chat. In fact, this is very um, apposite because um, Esmeralda is with us right now, Esmeralda Salgado, uh, or Botanist Salgado on Twitter, and she's been incredibly uh, supportive and um, sharing of her, her ideas and her time um, in, uh, since lockdown. And, and obviously prior to that, but particularly during lockdown, she's been absolutely fantastic. And she came up with the idea of creating a Padlet and asking people in the community to uh, share their ideas, particularly you know, more creative ideas like escape rooms and virtual classrooms. And the community has really you know, stepped up and come up trumps and shared all these amazing resources, which are all available via the link at the bottom there, which don't forget you're getting this whole presentation. So if you're, if you're looking for examples of escape rooms and how they can be used in languages, then these are you know, real teachers sharing real resources that you can then uh, use and, and, and um, either use as they are or be inspired and make your own because um, that's what people want they just want practical examples within their own subject area I think so thank you ever so much to Esmeralda for putting that together and for all the support you've given the community in the in recent weeks um, so this was also an example of the community helping um, each other so when we first um, got into the whole um, what well, if I'm going to do a live session I've got to use uh, Zoom, MS Teams, Google Meet um, or, or something equivalent and so I thought it would be a really good idea to contact um, experts who are language teachers who are using these different tools. So um, people like um, uh, Phil Longwell, uh, Heike, Heike Philp, um, Jane Bassnett, 
um, uh, Darren White, who was uh, Darren White and, and Jane have both given, uh, in fact, Heike as well have given webinars for us. And so I put together a set of questions in Google Forms, sent it through to um, the those people I've just mentioned, and they then filled in all the the answers according to that particular tool that they were that they were particularly you know um, uh, skillful in. And so as a result of that, as you can see, can you get the one here. Um, yeah, can you mute your audio, please? Sorry. I can't hear. Yeah, anyway, um, as you can see, we've got the questions such as, you know, can attendees join a session before the teacher? Can the teacher enable a waiting room and so on and so forth? Uh, yeah. So CPD is continuing professional development, PD professional development. So we just had a C in, uh, in, in the font of us, but it's the same uh, idea. OK. And then there's two pages of this. So this the, the first page and then this page. And this seemed to be a really good idea from the point of view of trying to keep the, the students and the teacher as safe as possible from a safeguarding point of view and from a privacy point of view. Um, so the Facebook, uh, the Facebook group is Bitmoji Craze for Educators. Bitmoji Craze. It's already in the chat, so have a look in the chat and you'll be able to find it. So again, I, I thought that would be a helpful thing to do. And so I, yeah, um, I put that together with the, with the support of the, the people I mentioned, put it on Twitter, and it had a lot of Twitter love back in uh, a few months ago now. Okay, um, another thing which um, teachers have been asked to do is uh, screencasting. So there are lots of schools which are banning, particularly in the public sector or in the state sector, have been banning um, face to, uh, sorry, um, synchronous live lessons. And so as a result of that, um, teachers have been uh, creating screencasts, um, either just recording their PowerPoint and recording their audio and turning it into a video or using a tool such as Loom or Screencastify or Screencastomatic that I mentioned already. Um, there was an article in the TS uh, in March, as you can see, it says four reasons pre-recorded lessons are your best option, which I don't really agree with. Although there was some discussion recently about, about this again, again from the TS, about um, you know, suggesting that asynchronous lessons are just as good as synchronous lessons. Well, I, I think that a mixture of the two, which I know is an obvious thing to say, is probably best. But actually, I think that live lessons, when you can actually see the students' faces and, and see how they're reacting to the classwork that you're doing, is probably, in my opinion, the best thing. But I appreciate that for safeguarding reasons that schools are not allowed to do that. So I don't want to get into a big debate about the whys and wherefores of that. That's my own personal opinion. And then in that Facebook uh, group, which is another Facebook group organized by Linguascope, I was... Uh, a host of that for a month in April of this year and I wrote quite a few articles um, for them and one of the articles was around screencasting so I gave lots of ideas around screencasting again to support teachers um, who were maybe thinking how do I do a screencast how do I and I was literally seeing people things as, uh, writing things like you know how do I record my PowerPoint and I just I've been I've been working incredibly hard along with lots of other people supporting people helping people uh, in fact, I've probably worked the hardest in the last 12 weeks than I haven't ever done in my whole life. But, um, you know, I know it's very much appreciated, so that's fine. Okay, and again, here's some, um, uh, here's some feedback from uh, real teachers uh, from the MFL Twitterati. So, for example, you've got Mazigan um, saying, uh, uh, using Loom to walk students through a sample answer saves times in class, promotes autonomous learning and sense-making, allows for a flipped classroom. Kind of recommend this tool enough and what i particularly like about that as well is at the bottom there you've got loom themselves replying to that uh, that that tweet saying you know love this so glad we could be uh, useful for your class then likewise you've got ms grice uh, saying you know using loom for the first time yesterday thanks for the tip joe and was surprised how easy it was to use definitely recommend it for anyone teaching from home and then rachel underneath again this is sort of typical of the conversations that have been happening all the time how does this compare to screencast i I've been using that one so far. I can't compare because I've only used Loom, but it's so simple. The students really like it, but she has some difficulty around the editing and trimming of videos. I know that people, when they've been uploading Loom videos, some of them have been taking a time. So I think that my two favorites are either Loom or screencast uh, Sorry, yeah, Screencastify, but with Screencastify, you can only record for five minutes, but you could got the annotation tool for free, whereas uh, the Loom one, you can get the Loom Pro account, and the details of that is in that long document I mentioned earlier. But you have to wait, you know, a couple of days um, to get that Loom Pro account. But then you can use the annotation tool with that. So that's another nice thing that you can do as well. Right. So Flipgrid. Um, can I just get an idea in the chat? Um, those people have been using Flipgrid because Flipgrid seemed to have been a very um, popular tool that people have been using. And again, I was going to show you a live uh, version of this, which I'm not going to dare to do now. But um, essentially, Flipgrid, if you haven't seen it before, um, it's um, uh, uh, you can make unlimited grids and in each grid you can make unlimited topics so I always suggest that the grid is like your class and the topics are like your lessons so uh, you create a video 
um, normally as the teacher, you create the, uh, the video in the target language, um, asking a question, and then the students can then all then record their answers and they all appear on the grid. You can moderate um, the videos so that um, only the teacher gets to see them. The teacher can give them feedback, which only the students see, or the teacher can enable peer-to-peer um, uh, -peer feedback, which is actually on by default, which you can change if you go to edit topic within, um, within Flipgrid. But you can, um, uh, you can enable that. So it means from a speaking point of view, from asynchronous speaking, uh, you can create your, your question and the students can then record on the web browser, on the mobile app, works on Android and on iOS, works on all devices, and they can then send you the audio, which you can then give feedback on. You can do things like um, annotate. You can uh, you have a whiteboard feature, so you can do like a grammar explanation using the pen tool. Uh, and my favourite feature is the um, uh, uh, being able to screen record, which I'll talk about more on the next slide. But on this slide, you've got Jane there showing a practical example. Jane Bass that I mentioned already. And what she is doing there, she's using what's called a Flipgrid short, which is not connected to a grid, it's just a standalone video. She's used what's called a sticker. So she's got an image of um, the simple future, uh, which she's then describing with her voice, with the, um, the image and with the annotation. So she's using the pen tool to then annotate over the top. And um, she's then explaining that. And then presumably then she would get her students to then uh, send her videos uh, based on the, that particular uh, explanation. On the right hand side, she's talking about uh, using the perfect tense with être and avoir. And so here she's got an image which she's, um, she's dragged right over the screen. So the children don't want to appear uh, with their face at all. Uh, one option is pixelate the, the image, which I was going to show you live, but I'm not going to do it right now. You can pixelate the image so it's all pixelated, or you can add a picture and drag it over the whole thing so you can't see the person's face at all, or you can use an emoji over the person's face so you can then hide, uh, hide them if they don't want to be seen. So in this example, she's got a picture and then she's then annotating over, the, over that picture, talking about uh, how to form the perfect tense with être navoir. Then bottom left, you've got um, a teacher um, who has got um, a fantastic YouTube channel, uh, Sam Carey, uh, C-A-R-Y, and uh, he's an American uh, educator, and uh, he's done a brilliant video called How to Teach Remotely with Flipgrid. He, done, he did one recently on Jamboard as well. He's got a fantastic YouTube channel. I would really encourage you to, um, to check out uh, what I'm showing you. Uh, I'm sort of not really monitoring the chat, so I'm sort of focusing on the presentation, if that's okay. But if there's any questions that come through, I'm more than happy to take them um, later. Uh, and then you've got Jess on the right-hand side, uh, who works with Flipgrid, um, who has done a nice little video clip there? Who um, uh, who's describing different ways in which you can use Flipgrid? In fact, let me just let me just go through some of the questions. So let's have a look. So uh, yeah, so Sam Carey, and it's a fan of Sam Carey. Yeah. So as I said already, Marta, the um, presentation. I'm going to give you the whole presentation at the end, but you have to wait until half past ten if that's okay. Uh, and I'll obviously share it on Twitter as well. Um, let's go through any other questions. Uh, no, that's all good. I think. Right. Let's go back to where I was. Okay, so um, let's go on to the next page. Now the next page is also about Flipgrid. So I've got a screenshot there of, um, of a school in the UAE. Um, and as you can see, they've written some really lovely videos from year nine this morning on Flipgrid. So year nine is sort of 14 year olds for those people not in the, the UK system. Um, even got a subjunctive, such community of confidence. We, may, we may not be face to face, but Zoom, Flipgrid and Hangouts are our next best thing. So I, I love that, the way in which um, they're making do with these fantastic tools. They prefer to have the face-to-face -face opportunity, but it means they can still practice their speaking remotely, which is a question which I've been seeing all the time. Um, and I'm going to share an article with you that I wrote on Facebook, which essentially is years and years of research, which I just I took a, a couple of days to write it. And it gives lots of different um, suggestions on how you can promote speaking uh, um, remotely. And uh, yeah, I'm going to share that with you later. You then got the screen recording option there that's only in the browser based version so what you do is you um launch flip flip grid you've got the record button you've got the ellipsis the three dots to the left of that you click on that and then you have the screen recording option which you click on that what i was going to show you was i was going to um, launch google earth um, i was then going to click on the i'm feeling lucky option which is like a, a little dice on the left hand side or die should i say you click on uh, that and it will then take you anywhere in the world. So the idea is you can record your screen. You could use Loom or Screencastify to do this as well, but I, what I like about it is it's inbuilt within Flipgrid. So you can record your screen. 
um, going to um, a place on the earth, you can then drag and drop Pegman, as it's called, um, on the right-hand side of the screen into the place. You then zoom in uh, into Street View, and then you can then ask the children questions about, you know, where are they? What can they see? What's the weather like? If they see any people, they can say, What's, what has that person done? What is he doing? What is he going to do? So practicing different tenses. Um, so flip, Flipgrid is video and audio. Um, if you have just an image over the top of your um, screen, so the students can't be seen at all, then it's just basically like podcasting. You've just got the audio only. But the, the core way of using it, really, um, is, the, uh, is by recording video, um, respecting safeguarding reasons, of course, that you have in your school as well. Okay? Um, there we are. So, and there's also a, um, a Flipgrid uh, Chrome extension and a Microsoft Edge extension as well, so you can do it straight from your your browser. But if you watch other videos that I've done on my YouTube channel, I'm gonna I, I show live what I was going to show you, but I don't want to risk it. That's okay. So I do apologise for that. But um, I've done this a few times in other presentations, so you'll be able to check that out in your own time. Right. Um, again, I'm not going to risk doing this either. But uh, but this has been a very very fun. Um, exercise that or sorry tool that people have been using uh, recently called whiteboard.fi so again people were looking for um, a way of creating digital mini whiteboards and so this came along this was created I think um, uh, you know just a few months ago uh, and the the teacher the person that, that created this is a teacher and he's updated it a few times recently so essentially the idea is as the teacher you click on new class uh, you put your name in it generates a code. You give the code to the students, um, either as the link or if you just give them the code, they click on join class, they put the code in and they all get their own mini whiteboard. So they can all draw on their mini whiteboard. But then if the teacher is sharing their screen, then the teacher can then see all the mini whiteboards that the, the students have done. So, for example, in other webinars, I've, I've asked the question, I've, I've said, can you please draw a picture to represent how you're feeling about remote teaching? And so some people, for example, might draw a heart or some people might draw a happy face or, or what have you. And then I can then click on an individual whiteboard and it goes, you know, full screen and I can then comment on that. You can even record the screen using Screencastify and then draw over the top of someone else's drawing and give immediate feedback. But all those sorts of mini whiteboard games that you were doing in class for showing understanding uh, around sentence builders and all the rest of it will work really nicely using whiteboard.fi. And I can see that uh, a lot of people have been saying that they like to use that in class well please keep the chat going that's a, that's amazing thank you so much it'll be a really rich resource i'm sure by the end so if you've not seen it before have a look at it and on this next page i've got some um, a few screenshots of tweets of uh feedback that people have given around whiteboard.fi so for example you've got bev browse there saying i love whiteboard.fi for the interaction in live lessons being able to do lots of sentence builder activities and it's worked really well uh florence is going to be doing a webinar for us in a couple of weeks time uh, saying, you know, they loved it. It's very responsive and allowed me to give feedback, used it with Microsoft Teams. Thanks, Joe, for introducing it to me. Uh, my favorite one is from Ms. Ganzorn here, which she says, you know, thank you very much. I will think about ways I can use it in my class. Thank you again for whiteboard.fi. It is the highlight of my lockdown. I think my year 10 will be uh, forever grateful for you uh, to you for it, which I just think is really, really lovely. And then likewise, um, Helena on the right-hand side here, language, she's written, um, you know, uh, thank you for showing me how to split my screen in Google Meets game changer. So if you don't know how to do that, there's a various ways of doing it. But my favorite way of doing it is called um, tab scissors, which is a Chrome extension tab scissors. So if I just write that in the chat for you, if my keyboard's working, no, it's not working. Okay. Okay. Tab scissors, T A B space scissors as in tab scissors. And then the other one is called tab glue. So essentially you've got, um, let's say you've got eight tabs open. Uh, and you have the Google Meet on the left and you have the, let's say, uh, whiteboard.fi on the right. You click on the tab on the right that has whiteboard.fi with tab scissors. And what it does is it splits um, the one uh, window into two windows. And the advantage of that means that you can then look at the activity, which could be whiteboard.fi or Jamboard or whatever it might be. But you can also look at the, the children's faces at the same time, which I think is incredibly useful in a live lesson. So those those are a few um bits of feedback about white.fi and I can see that people in the chat, some of you are really liking that as well. Again, an example of um, the power of the MFL Twitterati. I was, I've been constantly thinking in the last few weeks, you know, how can I support the community? And so I thought it'd be a good idea to ask a couple of questions such as, as you can see on in May, end of May, I said, uh, as you've all been teaching remotely for a number of weeks now, what would you say are your do's and don'ts of online teaching? Please retweet. 
And then again, I put another question um, uh, a, a couple of minutes later, 10, 20 minutes later. Another question I've been pondering is how do you ensure interaction with your students when teaching either synchronously or asynchronously, playing games live, uh, setting homework assignments or using the chat function in online tools you are using? And so I had lots and lots of replies. And what I did was I then condensed all those replies into this Google Doc, which you've got uh, a link to at the bottom there. And particularly those teachers that contacted me in the last couple of days who've sort of been saying, oh, I'm really looking forward to this session. It's going to help me, hopefully, with my planning for September when we go into the hybrid uh, phase. Hopefully, this particular document will be particularly useful um, for seeing how other teachers are uh, uh, you know, giving their top tips on what works and what doesn't work, or what particularly works, should I say. Um, and hopefully, you should find that really, really useful. So um, there we are. I'm sharing that with you as well. Let's carry on. Right, um, this is an article which I wrote again for the Modern Languages Teachers Lounge, which I mentioned already, around drawing um, in MFL. Uh, so MFL, if you don't know, is Modern Foreign Languages. And so um, this particular one, what it does is it, lo it looks at all different ways in which you can use different drawing tools in languages. So I, it mostly looks at whiteboard.fi, but it also looks at some other ones. So some of those third party, third party tools that I mentioned earlier, uh, it it uh, gives you the names of those um, and you can sort of check those out. Um, there's one, for example, called Zeitboard, which is Z-I-T-E-B-O-A-R-D. And there's other ones um, uh, as well. There's one called Escalidraw, which is E-X-C-A-L-I-D-R-A-W, Escalidraw, which is a bit like a bit like Jamboard, but will work on any um, device. Um, so also with that one, there's also one called Quick Draw with Google, which you haven't seen before. Quick draw with Google. Um, essentially, what it is really good for vocab, for sort of open-ended vocab. And what it allows you to do is you can choose the language. So there's a drop-down menu, bottom right of the screen. You click on that and you choose the language that you want. And uh, so, for example, I choose French. And then what will happen is you'll get uh, six different uh, vocab words that come up, and you have to then draw uh, those vocab words in, you know, x number of seconds. And then it will then tell you whether you got it right or wrong. So it's a really nice sort of open-ended challenging one for the, the the children that can't get enough and want to you know learn new words and i actually demonstrated this live in the keynote in um uh on uh, uh, for the mltaq the modern language Teachers association of queensland in 2017 did it live in front of everyone in the keynote and i'll never forget having to to draw a tractor uh, using the mouse on my laptop that was quite interesting but yeah a nice a nice open-ended drawing activity for unleashing creativity in the uh, in the languages classroom Okay, this also, I think, um, should be very, very useful to everybody, which is the following. So I was very inspired uh, in the last couple of um, months by a friend of mine called Chris Betcher, who's Betcher Boy on Twitter. He lives in North Sydney. I've known him for, for many years on Twitter, and I've, I've stayed at his house um, the one time a couple of years ago as well. He's a really uh, great guy. He knows lots of things about Google yeah. tools. And um, uh, he put together a Google form which, um, as you can see, is called Quiz Questions Galore Google Form, which I just thought was brilliant. So essentially what he'd done was he'd gone through um, each um, type of activity that you could do with a Google Form, and, and I just thought that was great. So what I did was I then used his core idea, but I just made lots of examples of how it could be used in languages. And so you've got the link, um, the two links there at the bottom. You've got the link to the form, and you've also got the, uh, a copy of that. So if you click on the second link, it will automatically make a copy for you um, for this form. So in this form, I would show you live normally, but um, essentially you, it goes through all different ways in which you can do things such as matching activities, reordering um, words or short phrases in a sentence, uh, reordering lines in a dialogue, uh, doing listening practice um, using, uh, there's a free tool. Called, there's a free tool. Can we mute our audio, please? There's a free tool called Online Voice Recorder online voice recorder, which works really, really nicely with uh, Google um, uh, content. You just record your audio. You can then edit it at the beginning and the end, download it as an MP3, upload it into Google Drive, and then make it um, what's called a shareable link. Shareable link. You just right-click the, the, uh, the file, or you right-click the folder, and you choose Get Shareable Link. If you just do a search for Get Shareable Link, you'll see it uh, on the internet or look on YouTube. And then um, as a result of doing that, you copy that link and you put it into the Google form. Um, and then you can then do um, um, uh, listening comprehension activities whereby the audio is the, 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 the audio you listen to at the beginning or in the form, it's got um, multiple choice as well. You've got four possible answers and each answer is a separate piece of audio. 
the online voice recorder is also really nice if you put that up into Drive and you can then insert the audio from there into Google Slides as well. And a few people in the MFL Twitter Arty have been playing around with uh, pyramid translation and things like that using the insert audio feature in Google Slides. Um, so that's another option. So yeah, have a look at that Google form. You'll find it very useful, I think. And um, I was sharing uh, a copy of that form on um, a Facebook group and there was a teacher who's given me permission to share this as well, who had basically had used that, um, that form as a way of uh, using it within Spanish. I know this is the Spanish Association, so here's a, 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 a bona fide Spanish teacher using uh, one of the resources that I've uh, created. And so you can see that she's got screenshots um, uh, of a table, a sentence builder. She's got different images, um, so multiple choice of different images and what have you. And um, in, uh, in my example, it literally has a step-by-step -step guide on how to create each uh, exercise. Also for speaking, which was an idea which um, uh, Glenn Cake, who also had, had, has done a webinar for us in the past, um, he suggested using Vokery, which I saw was mentioned in the chat a moment ago. So with Vokaroo, if you haven't seen it before, it's a web-based tool. You can record audio, it generates the link, and then um, you can create what's called a short answer question within a Google form. The, the children record their audio in Vokaroo, post the link into the, uh, the short answer, and then that's all automatically added to a Google Sheet, which means that the, the teacher um, can then listen to that and then obviously uh, can mark that. It's not going to be self-marking as all the other exercises are that I've shared in, that, uh, in the previous slide, but... It's a really nice way of um, practicing speaking. I can see that Glenn's in the room right now. So thank you ever so much for that idea, Glenn. Um, I thought that was really, uh, really cool. So thank you for that, Glenn. And it's lovely that you could make this as well. Cool. Right. Another big question, um, which has come up uh, in, uh, in recent weeks, uh, particularly from independent schools, has been how do you do, form, uh, sorry, how do, you do summative assessments uh, remotely? And so as you can see, I was very honest, as I am in general, um, uh, on Twitter. And you can see that I wrote the tweet on April 25th. Hey, MFL Twitter writing, has anyone got any bright ideas on how to do a summative assessment a writing task in a remote teaching context and ensure that students don't use Google Translate to complete it? I'm stumped, <laughs> um, which I was. I was genuinely stumped because I couldn't work out what to do. But then, of course, Twitter, as always, came up with some amazing ideas. So um, probably my favorite solution is uh, the following, which um, uh, a teacher who um, came to a show and tell that we did, um, Paul... Uh, Paul Evans, Paul Evans, if I remember correctly, who is based in the UAE, and he suggested exam.net, which I'd never heard about before. So exam.net, what it allows you to do is it allows you to create a PDF uh, and upload it onto exam.net, or you can upload audio files for listening practice as well. Uh, if you're using exam.net now, feel free to write anything in the chat about that. And uh, the reason it sort of discourages people from using Google Translate is the way that it will monitor your keyboard and it will know if you've taken your fingers off the keyboard for any period of time. You can also force um, uh, submit the work as well. So you can give the students say an hour to do the ac uh, activity and then they can then, then they have to submit the answer, uh, the, 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 so their answers. Um, you could also, as um, my friend Francois Stolder, who's also done a tilt webinar for us as well on the right hand side, he's a teacher um, who I originally met back in about 2013 um, when he was head of languages in um, Harrow School in Bangkok, but he's now working in Budapest at the American School of Budapest. And um, he was getting the children to point their webcams at their hands. But instead of using exam.net, they were, they were writing out their work on bits of paper. And again, you can see that his tweet is saying that one of the students said that, um, I like the way it is set up. Uh, so it, it makes sure that it's fair for everyone, which again, I think is absolutely lovely. Um, I've also added the office lens um, icon there, which you could use to take a photo or photos of different bits of work that you've done in that context or in, in general for handing in uh, work remotely. And you can then turn the whole thing into a PDF, um, which is really nice and it flattens the image and it makes it look very nice on the screen. And then you can then upload it to Google Drive or Microsoft Teams or whatever you wanted to, to do with it. Um, uh, so that's exam.net. And then also two Chrome extensions were recommended to me. One is called Draftback and one is called DocuViz. Uh, both of which use the revision history in Google Docs. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to see, for example, if a large piece of um, text has been copied and pasted into a document. So just by going through uh, the history using this, and it has sort of nice visuals on how to do that. Uh, when you do that, I mean, you can immediately see if someone has used, for example, Google Translate and just pasted it straight into, uh, uh, into the document. So that's also nice in a Google 
uh, docs environment. Um, uh, yeah, with exam.net as well, it's completely free for this year. But my understanding is from the YouTube clips I've seen, they're probably going to be charging next year, but we particularly need it this year, I think. But next year um, in Sweden, which is where it's come from, I think they were charging eight euros per student, which is about eight dollars, ten dollars or eight pounds, something like that per student for the year. But at the moment, my understanding is it's completely free. So do check that out. And I'm going to try and play some audio now, which hopefully you'll be able to hear. I, I did um, a set of webinars for uh, Coasset, who are like a... Um, an organization in Australia, um, they, well, all around the, the country, but the people who took part in the webinar from, were from Melbourne. And there was a teacher there who kindly recorded some audio for me about her use of exam.net, which I'm gonna try and play you now. Let's see if this works. Hi there, my name is Mary Manfield. I'm a senior English humanities and Italian teacher. And I've just recently discovered the exam.net program through one of Joe Dale's amazing webinars. I recently used it in class with my seniors as well as my junior students and I found it really fantastic. I used it for my year nine class for a timed English essay whereby they were given a topic and they had a timed piece and at the end of that time they were kicked out and I was able to sync their essays to go straight to Google Drive which made it super easy to correct. And once I corrected them, I could send them back to their email addresses with all their corrections, which made it a lot more efficient than normal. I also did a listening track. So my husband and I recorded a role play and my senior students got to listen to that and answer questions in a timepiece as well. And more recently, we did a vocabulary test with my year eights and they were translating some terms in either English or Italian. I found this program to be really engaging and super efficient. They can't cheat. They get blocked out if they cheat and the computer will tell me if what they're doing, which is fantastic. So I think it's a great program to have for those who do online learning or for universities or other schools and I've really thoroughly enjoyed it. So I look forward to seeing what other things I can do with using that program. There we are. So I was very grateful for that teacher for um, giving me that audio. I can see there's a few questions in the chat. So hopefully that's clear on the two Chrome extensions. They're actually written on the screen as well. So one's called Draftback and the other one's called DocuViz. Um, I'm sure there is a Microsoft equivalent, but um, I'm not the person to ask about that. I would suggest that you contact Jane Bassnet or, um, uh, or Sandra Aktas, who also, um, uh, or, or someone else in the chat right now um, who, who are real experts on using um, Microsoft tools, uh, or Helen Helen as well, um, I'm sure we'll be able to answer that as well. But um, off the top of my head, I, I, I don't know of a way of doing that, but I'm sure it's possible. Um, right, Wheel of Names is absolutely fabulous. If you haven't seen it before, um, uh, it's, it's great. So here are four examples of how you can use it. Um, you could use it as a name picker. You may recognize the four names in a particular group. Um, that was there. That's an example, obviously, of a name picker. You can have up to 200 names, I think it is, per wheel. So you can uh, put in the names. You can then save each uh, wheel uh, and bring it up uh, separately. That's lovely. You can um, use emojis as well. There's a, an emoji keyboard, um, which I would recommend, which I've got the link there, Chrome extension emoji keyboard. You could add in three emojis per wheel, uh, sorry, per section on the wheel. It then comes up. You then ask everyone uh, or the students to then... Uh, do a, a writing activity or speaking activity as a starter. So they go right in the chat, um, make up a sentence using uh, three of the pictures, for example. So the right of that, um, auto draw that I mentioned in relation to Jamboard, but it's autodraw.com is a website as well. So you can draw simple pictures of, for example, a cat or a dog or what have you, and then put them into a wheel of names. You can also have multiple wheels next to each other if you use a Chrome extension such as tab resize, tab resize, and have four windows side by side. And then the four, uh, on the fourth wheel there, you've got the different activities that you could do to use that as an activity picker. So it's a random choice, given the, uh, the choice to the students. So again, I've got all the links here, but I'm not going to try and click on any of them because it might crash again. Um, this has proved incredibly popular. This is called Flippity Randomizer. If you go to flippity.net in general, um, so can you... So you can have wheel of names going well. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can have wheel of names set. Yes, Sarah. Yes, um, you can have wheel of names all going. In fact, we've done that in other presentations that I've done. I've done it live, so you can watch that on my YouTube channel. But with Flippity.net, 
um, what you can do is if you're into sentence builders, which we used to call writing frames back in the day, so you'd have different columns in a table, and then the idea is that you would choose one item per column, uh, and then randomly make them appear on the screen. So if you were to spin the wheel, which again, if I clicked on the link um, at the bottom there, I could then show show you this live. But essentially, you click on the icon on the right hand side, it then spins the wheels, and then it comes up with a phrase, a random phrase. So what you would do is you would then say um, the the phrase that came up. You would then translate it uh, out loud, or, uh, or or just um, repeat it, or you could have translation races whereby the students are writing the the translation into the chat. Um, now, if you had um, screen recording, also oh, before I mention that as well, underneath the bottom uh, link is to uh, a Chrome extension called Helper Bird. And with Helper Bird, it has access to Immersive Reader, which is a Microsoft tool which allows you to read back um, text in the target language. So what you can do is you can highlight the text that in this case is saying, j'aime le sport avec mes amis, mais qu'on il y a du soleil, what have you. You could highlight that, uh, right click, click Helper Bird, choose immersive reader and it will read it back to you in French or obviously if it's in Spanish or in German it would recognize the language straight away and it would read it back to you which again could be good for pronunciation practice or for accessibility. Uh, now uh, Mike Elliott who uh, comes regularly to these webinars that we take part in, sorry that's just an example of a sentence builder so this is the work of Vincent Everett to, um, who uh, is a, is a, is a, has been in, um, at the Association for Language Learning for for many years, I've known it for many years, and he's a big fan of census builders. He did a webinar for us all about this, as well as one for Linguascope. And um, that's an example of a Google Sheet. So for all the Flippity activities, you need a Google Sheet, and, and it's got all the instructions on the website. So he, um, uh, he came up with this idea of a census builder. I then took his uh, census builder and I put it into Flippity. I sh shared it to him and saying, what do you think of this, Vince? And he just said, wow, I think if I remember correctly, or I like it or something. So that's that example. And then on the next slide, this is uh, Mike Elliott, who regularly comes to the Tilt webinars as well. He's, use, he's using the screen recording feature in Flipgrid. So he records uh, the, uh, he was suggesting you could record the screen while um, the randomizer is changing um, each uh, wheel. And uh, when it stops, the, the student would then read the, 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 the phrase which came up. Um, in the target language, but then would also translate it. So um, in, in the video that is there, um, it's, it's um, six minutes long and, and uh, three minutes of it, he suggests of doing this activity. And then when he's actually doing it, it's quite amusing because he realizes that three minutes is way too long. Actually a minute or 30 seconds would be much better. But by doing that, you're essentially recycling the same language from a sentence builder, but in a random way for practicing uh, translation as well as um, speaking. So check that, it's Mike Elliott MFL on Twitter, Mike Elliott MFL on Twitter. So check out uh, that video when uh, I'll give you the link. Here's another example of a flippity act activity. This is called uh, manipulatives. So this is a, a classic drag and drop tiles activity, but you can also record audio using Vocary, which I mentioned already. So again, you use a Google sheet, you just follow the, the template, um, following the instructions. You can record uh, with Vokaroo, get a link, put the link into, the, into the, the spreadsheet, and it generates a player automatically. So in that example, you listen to the audio, and then you simply drag and drop the tiles into the correct order. And each time you send that link to a new student, the order will be randomized. So it's not, you know, it won't always be the same, which is a nice sort of listening activity. Uh, learningapps.org, which I know Esmeralda is a big fan of, as well as other people, is also a nice activity for remote listening practice as well. And there's lots of other things that, um, uh, yeah, that's right. The Vocary links expire after three months, but you can always just re-record it. It would take you two seconds to re-record it. And that's what I would recommend. Okay, I was hoping to show this one live, um, but I've just got a video here. I might just play the video if you don't mind, because uh, this is a game changer, I think. This is called Quicker Conversations. And essentially what it is, is um, uh, you have to create an account with Quicker. It's completely free. It was designed by um, a physics teacher in the Southwest of England. Um, who's very um, uh, uh, good at troubleshooting. If there's any an issue, I always contact him and he sort of, uh, you know, it, 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 he works out what the issue um, is. But essentially, um, you uh, record your audio using uh, Quicker. You, it then generates a URL. You give the URL to the students. Uh, the students can then uh, record their audio um, asynchronously, and it will then all appear in, um, in, on the page. And you can also turn on moderation um, so that all the audio is moderated and then you click on approve um, for uh, for you to, to then approve that audio. So if it's okay, I'm just going to play this video because I don't want to try and do it live and just see what you think. 
and I thought I'd make a quick video tutorial showing a new feature within Quicker. Quicker is a QR code generating software which allows you to promote speaking and uh, audio feedback. So we're on the main homepage here, which is uk.quicker.education, and I click on Create Instant Feedback. I then scroll down to the bottom of the page and I click Start a Quicker Conversation here. Okay, having done that, I then record my first message. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. Click stop. Okay, that uploads onto their servers, which are based in the UK, which is fantastic. And from there, I go down to the bottom, and you can see that it gives me the option to turn on moderation, which is an absolutely key feature uh, in using this, in my opinion. So you now click on start your quicker conversation. Okay, this thing comes up. I can then copy this link and I can share it in the chat in a video conferencing tool or send it to the students via email or what have you, however you share links with the students. But for now, I'm going to click on my QR code extension and I'm going to launch my device, my iPad, uh, tap the camera, scan the QR code like this, and then tap the notification on my screen, which brings up the page, um, which allows me to record part two of the conversation. So now I tap on the microphone, I tap record, I give permission for the microphone to access the uh, the site, and away we go. Blah, 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 blah. This is part two of the conversation. Blah. I press stop. That uploads the audio onto the servers as well. And I get a message saying response waiting approval. If I now refresh the page here, you can see that it says uh, approve and delete. So I would listen back to the audio, but I know using uh, Loom right now, to, you won't be able to hear it. So you just have to believe me, you just heard me say it anyway, so that's fine. So I'm gonna click approve. Okay, and then that's it. And then the, the teacher can then uh, record the next part and the student reply, et cetera, et cetera. So you could use it either for speaking practice with audio feedback or for a conversation, back and forth conversation in the target language. If you want to lock the conversation so uh, the student can no longer send you audio, you just click on the padlock and you click lock conversation. And that's it. Quicker, uh, fantastic for practicing speaking and audio feedback, but this new feature with moderation, Quicker Conversations, is going to be amazing for language teachers. Hope you find it useful. There we are. So normally I would show you that live, but um, but uh, fortunately I had the, the video there. That's on my YouTube channel as well. I did make it uh, using Loom as well. Uh, it's very nice for audio. The audio quality is very nice as well. Uh, okay, so um, this is the um, yeah, this is the, the the very long article which I mentioned, which took me two days to write, which has basically years of research uh, put into it based on my uh, my experience and my practice and what I do in training workshops. So check it out. Um, you've got the link there. Lots and lots of ideas on remote teaching uh, in relation to GDPR and what have you. The, the servers are based in the um, uh, in in well, if you go to the UK version of the site, the servers are in the UK. And if you're in Europe, then it goes to the European um, uh, uh, servers. And so it is GDPR compliant from that point of view. But again, if you contact um, uh, Mark, who's the, the, the developer, you can ask him any of those sorts of questions. In relation to copper, I presume it is, but I, I can't say hand on heart. You'd have to contact him and ask him. Um, I, I was going to show this live, but obviously I'm not going to do that now. So quizzes, I'm sure a lot of you know quizzes, but what you might not know is you can have audio uh, questions in quizzes. So before I, I talk about that in particular, these are examples of real teachers using quizzes. So you can see you have lots of different activity types, multiple choice, checkbox, fill in the blank and what have you. Uh, in the middle here, you've got Forest MFL talking about the fact that they've, they use quizzes as a way to finish off the lesson. So a nice way of finishing a lesson, which is something that came up in that, that top tips list that I talked about, is uh, finishing the plenary with um, a nice interactive activity like Quizlet Live or Quizzes. Um, on uh, uh, Karin there, uh, who's from Spain, I don't know if she's in the room right now, but um, she was using it in a live lesson looking at Le Futur Anterior and the fact they really liked it, so a retrieval practice activity. Uh, King's uh, creative, uh, Elia Esmeralda, um, uh, talking about uh, using um, quizzes with her year nine class for self-assessment. Uh, I love the one from Katie Lockett there. So she says uh, that apparently a student said, oh, that's cool. You could send that to our parents as in, you know, feedbacks. It, like with other tools, it creates a Google spreadsheet with all the evidence of the work. And if you're into your Bitmojis, you can create your own memes with your own Bitmojis as memes for like, you know, you got the right answer or, you know, try again, as it were, which again is a nice idea, which Andres has created, who is based in Malaysia. Um, 
let's uh, yeah i'm sharing the whole thing the whole presentation with you ramin don't worry right so i was going to do this live but i'm not going to do this right now obviously but you can have audio questions which is brilliant for remote listening practice um you can record up to 10 seconds per question um i did this with 700 people in um in when i was doing a session for the british council in indonesia in a webinar and my internet was absolutely fine for that but never mind um and uh yeah so you can have a, a question the text could be you know list the question and select the correct answer it could be multiple choice and it's self-marking but you're practicing listening remotely which i think is absolutely fabulous so it's just like kahoot and other things you know you go to joinmyquiz.com you put in the code you do the activity, it generates the Excel spreadsheet, it gives you, you know, um, it tells you who's the leader and all this sort of stuff. It's absolutely fabulous. Okay, so um, so the, the question, uh, what this is all about is, do you think you've experienced a pedagogical paradigm shift? And I'm going to play a video now. Uh, it, we're going to go over it a little bit, but hopefully you'll bear with me because I've tried very hard to put this presentation together. So we're probably going to go over by, by, by about 10 minutes, but do bear with me if that's okay. So again, I asked the MFL Twitter RT if they... Uh, felt that they had experienced a, if they had experienced a pedagogical uh, a pedagogical shift during the the, lo the lockdown, and I've got a video clip for you right now for my YouTube channel. Channel just go to, go to Joe Dell One Hundred. Anyway, here's a video clip. It's about three minutes long. It's got some nice cool music, which will probably uh, move you. I feel like crying at the moment. Anyway, so it'll probably move me um, as well. Uh, but this is real content from real sorry real feedback from real teachers language teachers about their experiences and uh, um, yeah have they experienced a paradigm shift which is what this webinar is all about here we go Thank you so much. Um, just to sort of finish off with, to, to show again how you can have a pedagogical paradigm shift, I thought I would show you how you can make an animated GIF using a Bitmoji. So this is how you can make your Bitmoji dance. So essentially, I took the Chrome extension for Bitmoji, dragged and dropped it into slide, duplicated the slide for each uh, picture, and I rotated. You can flip horizontally each Bitmoji to create this effect. So I did that in the web browser. I then opened up the Google Slides presentation 
on my iPad. I screen recorded to make the video. I then converted that into a GIF using an app called Image Play, which is IMG PLAY, which works on iOS and on, on, and on Android. Turned it into a GIF and inserted it into my Google Sites presentation. So if you want to make your Bitmoji dance, that's how you do it. And just a thought, <laughs> after this very, very memorable webinar, as Helen mentioned already, obviously to make a living, I'm doing these webinars. Um, I can't do them all for free. So if you'd like to uh, approach me about doing a paid webinar, hopefully the web, the the, uh, the um, internet collection will be better. There we are. I made this in um, uh, using Keynote, by the way. And as Helen mentioned, here are 18 example sessions of content that I can do, and I would, you know, I can do it anywhere in the world from the from the comfort of my study. Um, and let's just finish off now with the presentation. So there's the link. Thank you ever so much from the bottom of my heart. Seriously, thank you so much for persevering with me. Um, I thank you ever so much for the chat as well. I know, yeah, I have worked really, really hard on this presentation as well, you know, as is obvious in in the last few months. But um, I think, um, well, I know that Language Sheets have really appreciated it and uh, it felt the right thing to do and it still feels the right thing to do and I hope that you get a good break over the summer that you're not spending ages and ages planning for the hybrid approach that you'll probably be asked to do now by your schools and certainly when you start in September who knows what's going to happen then but um, myself and the MFL Twitter RT are going to be there to support you um, with all of this um, so don't worry and again I'd like to thank officially um, the Spanish Association for Trinidad and Tobago for giving me this opportunity and obviously for Helen being an absolute star tonight uh, helping me with this. Um, I did do a, a very similar recording for the Goethe Institute, which I think is going to be published somewhere. So if you want to see a much smoother version, feel free to do that. I will try and edit this or I might even suggest I just do a rerun as a tilt webinar because I think I can do a lot better than this. But thank you ever so much for the, for the, for the, for the feedback and thank you for bearing with me. And uh, I do really appreciate it. And, and no doubt when I stop this, the internet will be absolutely fine. It's just right now, uh, it, it was having a few issues. But um, Joe, yeah. you have won our hearts. You should see the lovely comments. I know how you'll be feeling, but we all know that because we're all in that situation. And we were just saying, you know, what a fantastic community. We've still got about 300 people here. You know, and it's just brilliant. And the comments have been lovely. And I think it almost it can get people even more on your side. The way you Thank just you. calmly come back and just carry on having had you. I've been on the phone with you and you just go, oh, yes, and now the wheel of names. <laughs> and I've got to apologise to Darcel because I didn't realise at some point we must have lost you, Darcel, and then I didn't bring you back again. So I expect you might want to say a few words. So, so it may be, shall I just uh, unmute you, Darcel, now? Because I think, I think you were muted. Thank you. I got kicked off well, but uh, so much to join. Oh, remains some and give wonderful ideas. I think on behalf of all of our teachers, you know, the Spanish Teachers Association of Trans Tobago, we want to say thank you so very much that you would share your expertise with us. It was a lovely session, you know, a little hiccups. And I think our chat is going crazy with all the wonderful comments, the, the expressions of gratitude. So thank you to Joe, thank you as well for being so calm and having a cup of tea as well with us. Thank you so much. Um, so you've got the presentation. We are recording this. I'll have a look at it. I was going to maybe even publish it tonight, but I'll have a look at it and maybe do a, a bit of careful editing. Um, and if need be, I might we might redo it maybe as a talk webinar. We'll see how we get on. I'll have a look at the editing and see how bad it is. And then uh, we'll then go from there. But if I can put it up by tomorrow morning, I will do that. And uh, I'll obviously tweet the presentation. Um, and uh, yeah, thank, thanks again.